let's talk about the best breakfast for weight loss. So I would invite you to think about what you normally have now, or maybe you have a a rotation of two or three things that you eat. So the best breakfast for weight loss is a savory breakfast. Now, if you have talked to me in person, this is definitely one of the things that I talk to people about all the time. It's a basic, and I'll tell you why. A savory breakfast helps you with weight loss and your health in the menopause transition and beyond. A savory breakfast keeps your blood sugar lower the whole day. So what I mean by this is if you have a savory breakfast and then eat, let's say you have chicken and vegetables for lunch and tofu and vegetables for dinner with berries for dessert. So if you have a sweet breakfast and then those lunches and dinners, your blood sugar will be higher for the whole day than if you have a savory breakfast and then you have that same chicken and vegetables for lunch and tofu and vegetables with some berries for dessert for dinner, your blood sugar will be lower for the whole day on the savory breakfast day. Now, I'll tell you why this is important. In our body at the menopause transition and beyond, we have a natural bump in insulin resistance. So our insulin is higher to process our food than it was before. Now, this puts us at risk of diabetes and it causes weight gain right there on our stomachs, on our bellies, on our abdomen. And none of us likes that part. (laughs) So if you are actively trying to lose weight, you want to have lower insulin, which means lowering your blood sugar for the day does make a difference. So a savory breakfast could be the, the key thing that helps you keep your weight back in a normal range or helps you lose weight if you're actively losing. Also will help you if you've had high blood sugars or been told you have prediabetes or you know that you have type 2 diabetes in your family will help you avoid that or push it off farther. So this is an important pivot for you. So let's talk about it. So you want to take out the sweets. It's funny, I remember my mom used to make these muffins for me when I was in college and send them to me and they were made out of oatmeal and whole grains and she would put some dried fruit and some, what do you call it, grated carrots and spices. There was some sugar in there. There was some sweetener in there, some things to sweeten it, but it was so different than what we get now. My husband brought some home some muffins the other day and it was basically a cupcake without frosting. And I thought, wow, we had them for dessert one night after our meal. But I thought, wow, if people do eat these in the morning, I'm going to get a big sh- sugar spike, glucose spike, and, and then their insulin spikes very high to process that food. And that causes us to store fat. So this sweet breakfast does not serve you. Also a bready breakfast, if you are someone who has croissants or toast or bagels, that kind of thing, is going to give you at the menopause transition and beyond, glucose spike, which is going to give you a lot of insulin around again, which will keep your body from naturally burning and releasing fat. So this is something to pivot from. So if you like to have bread in the morning, I do suggest you pivot and try out a sprouted bread or an ancient grain bread and eat it with something some protein and some vegetables so that you blunt that blood sugar spike. That will really, that can make a difference if you're feeling like, no, I really want the toast. But have the toast with avocado, have it with some pickled fish, whatever sounds good to you. And that will make a difference. Now, I'm trying to give you all good news here. (laughs) And I've got an important piece of advice at the very end of this podcast. But one last piece of bad news is take a look at your coffee creamer. If it is sweet, can you try out having a not sweetened creamer? I actually don't care whether you're having sugar or artificial sweetener or special sweetener or if you're doing a syrup or a honey or a maple syrup. Can you try out and experiment for a week? having an unsweetened creamer there, or maybe trying having your coffee or tea plain without a creamer. These also are going to 
bump up your blood sugar or insulin, and you're thinking, no, mine has the artificial sweetener that doesn't do that. When you're having that on a regular basis, most of these sweeteners are not kind to your gut. And having a good gut is going to make your menopause body healthier. And and a good, healthy gut also helps you lose weight. So are you willing to think about some pivots? Stay with me if you're feeling like I've only given you bad news, because let's talk about the opportunity that you have to try something different, okay? So proteins. We need some protein with our breakfast. We really need protein when we're losing weight so that we don't just waste away our muscles. There is a little bit of muscle mass with weight loss, but it is less when you have enough protein. Also, we are generally wasting muscle with the menopause transition because of the drop in estrogen. All humans start to lose muscle mass in the mid-30s. Men in general, it it tends to go gradually through their aging process. Now, for women, when our estrogen drops, we tend to lose more muscle mass again. So it is very important that we eat enough protein so that we can do activities to hold on to our muscle mass. And we need those building blocks that we have eaten, the protein we have eaten, to hold on to muscle. So protein. Eggs are are pretty good. They're actually not a super high protein item, but they are still good. You could have leftover meats from another meal. Chickpeas, black beans, tofu, tempeh, really great options to put with your breakfast because they're great vegetable proteins. Now, some dairy, if you are able to have dairy, Greek yogurt, Swedish yogurt, cottage cheese are also very good sources of protein that can be had at breakfast. How about with the processed meats? Our sausages, our bacons, our deli meats, they will work fine for weight loss, but they are not good for us. And when we're thinking about nourishing our body in the menopause transition, and if you're thinking about pivoting what you're doing at breakfast, then we want to move away from these. They cause cancer. People in our generation are experiencing cancer more than generations beforehand. And so this is one thing to pivot away from. It's a treat to have occasionally. I have a piece of turkey bacon probably once a month, maybe two slices. You know, we buy the healthiest version we can, but I don't eat it more than once a month anymore. It's, I know that it's not a healthy food. So think about that for yourself. All right. What else do we need with our breakfast? We need some fiber. So vegetables or berries are going to be the best. If you like sweet, how about berries? They have so much fiber that they're a terrific choice for any meal of the day. Vegetables, leftovers, how do that make that makes it easy for you, right? You can chop up some leftover vegetables and throw that in with your eggs or on their own. A handful of greens is also terrific. You can just make that in the pan. It takes a, about 15 seconds in a pan if you're willing to do that in the morning. Or some people actually like to have them fresh and, and raw with a little vinaigrette that does not have sugar in it, or a little olive oil and vinegar with a pinch of salt and pepper. You know, have that with your breakfast. You need the greens anyway because they're really good for your brain at menopause and beyond. So that's our fiber, vegetables, including greens and berries. Very important. Okay, we need a little healthy fat because this will help us with our weight loss. It will help us stay full to the next meal. It will help us to stay satisfied. So if you're having some meat, you've got some fat in there. You're fine. If you're cooking eggs or greens, you know, put a glug of olive oil in your pan. That will do it for you. Healthy fats do not cause any diseases, so you don't have to worry about this. And remember that your programming from the 1980s about worrying about calories from fat, that all all turned out to be a lie, and, and we don't need to worry about that anymore. So have a little glug of olive oil in there. Avocado is also a terrific thing. You've got plant fat in there, and you have a lot of fiber, even though it tastes very buttery. So if you're going to have your sprouted bread or your ancient grain bread, 
have some avocado on there and maybe some greens. Think about what else you'd want to put on there. Leftover vegetables from last night cut up, some tomatoes if that's what you like, some pickled fish if you're if that's one of your ethnic foods that you like or your cultural foods. So these things can work out really well for getting a little bit of fat in with your breakfast. Now, you, some of you are thinking, I fast, I don't have breakfast. Well, then that first meal of the day is you breaking your fast, even if it's lunch. So if you wait till the noon hour, you know, to have that meal, I would say go on to a lunch type meal. A lot of people think, well, I have my breakfast foods then. It may serve you better to just go on to a lunch meal whether and then have your your protein, whether that's vegetarian protein or an animal protein and vegetables or berries again. And don't forget, you want to get some greens in during the day. So pretty much the same advice. Now, some of you are thinking, I have not told you how much. So the first meal, the recommendation for a menopause body and for weight loss is about 30 to 40 grams. But I will warn you that with your first meal, it is just as important that you don't overeat. So for many of my clients and myself, when we wake up in the morning, we can't have that big a meal, but we want a meal when we wake up. So it is more important that you do not overeat than that you hit that marker. Now, obviously, if you add some protein powder to your morning, that will help up it. And so you can consider where that might fit in with your meal. But don't try to hit that mark if you're having that first meal of the day and you like a small meal. Just have some protein and some fiber. And if it is a smaller meal than, than what is recommended, that is okay. Just make sure you have some. Now, if you're waiting till later, you're probably going to be more hungry and want a bigger meal. And so that will work out for you. So how much protein do you need to hit this mark? You want to go the size and thickness of your palm for meat or vegetarian. Now, some of us will need up to two palm sizes and thicknesses. And part of that is depending on how big a person you are right now. You want to eat until you're satisfied. And so somewhere in there is the sweet spot. Pay attention to your body and, and how much you need. The recommended amount for fiber for your vegetables and berries is going to be a cup at that meal. Now, again, I am not a measuring person. So what I usually do is a handful of berries, a handful of greens. I take a big spoon of vegetables. These are great ways to not measure what you need for that cup of fiber. Again, do not overeat. There are diet programs that have taught us that fruits and vegetables are free. And so people stuff themselves with these. And we really want to quit overeating in general. So think about how much you want to eat. Think about how much is going to feel comfortable for you. Put that on your plate. And if you need a little bit more at the end, then have it. But you need some protein. You need some fiber in there. And we've talked about fats. But amounts are going to be enough to feel satisfied and then stop. If you're, like I said, if you're having a longer eating window and breaking your fast a little later, then go ahead and you'll want to have a little bit more because you'll be hungrier then. So that will work for you. So doing this pivot and experimenting with some different breakfast could be the one thing that you need really to get your weight loss going. And I tell you, this will definitely make your menopause body healthier. This can be a breakfast that you really enjoy. So are you willing to experiment and pivot and try this out for a week? I don't want to have given you a lot of bad news, but if you're having a sweet or a bready breakfast, it may be time to change because we want to have a healthier body. We want to think about how we nourish our body at the menopause transition and beyond. And notice when you have this kind of breakfast, if you don't feel better all day, this actually keeps your blood sugar from spiking, which will also keep you from getting hangry later in the morning. You may notice a higher energy, a better focus all day. And this is the good news that I'm promising. And it will also really work so much better for your weight loss journey. So thanks 
for staying till this point. If you're still listening, you wanted to hear that good piece of health advice that I have for you. Now, I wanted to highlight a couple things from this podcast that really are important for you. Most of you who listen to this podcast are not only trying to actively lose weight, but are trying to increase your health. So I just want to highlight that eating berries every day and eating about two cups of greens every day will add longevity. So increase the amount of time that you live, but also add health to your years. So increase your health span. Those greens are definitely proven to be good for your brain, but also other parts of your body. The berries it's hard to find an area that is not improved by berries. They're good for your brain. They're good for your metabolism. They're good for your skin, good for your heart. They are anti-cancer. So having both of those every day are great for both your weight loss journey and for your healthy eating journey as you think about nourishing your menopause body to carry you forward. So those that's the piece that I really wanted to highlight for you. Now that we've talked about how great they are for weight loss. So that's it, my friend. That is the good news that I promised. And while I may have loaded a bunch of bad news for you at the beginning of this podcast episode, I want to invite you to experiment with this pivot, try some different things than what you're doing now. In summary, you want to not have a sweet breakfast or a super bready breakfast anymore. So you're going to make sure that you have some protein and fiber and healthy fats in your breakfast. You're going to make sure that whatever you're drinking with breakfast is not sweetened, not naturally and not artificially. I really invite you to do this for your weight loss journey and for your health. See what you think about having your tea and or coffee without sweetener. If you hate it, you can make some changes, but try it and see what you think. Now, I invite you to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done so already, because all of August, I'm going to be giving you my very best tips for weight loss. And there will also be a webinar at the end of the month where we will talk about what menopause weight loss together. And you can come online and ask your questions, which will be a terrific time together. So share this podcast with a friend if you have a friend who's feeling stuck with weight loss or share it in, a, or share it in an online group where people are talking about breakfast, whether that's for weight loss or good health or just trying to figure out what to eat. Great to be with you today. Thank you so much. And I look forward to our next time together.